What's up guys, Frank Macaluso here from Garageaholic on our third and final sub mini series radiator bracketry installation. You can see the E36 behind me. Uh, we basically got it pretty much set. Everything is set in place. All we need to do now is finish that core support and connecting the dots to the frame rails, uh, to the headlight brackets, to the hood pins. So stand by, check it out, and I hope you learned something. So I got this 16 gauge sheet metal here. I've also got some 11 gauge bracketry metal, all mild steel here. Um, and uh, the idea is that I'm gonna end up connecting this guy to this guy because these are the mounts. These are from the E36 M3 and these guys are gonna end up sitting right inside of there. It fits kind of quite snugly. So this guy's gonna end up sitting right in there. The bracketry is gonna fit in this little lip there. There's a little lip inside. I just dropped it. So once we connect this, then it's going to be a matter of connecting that to this, and then that in some other capacity to the frame rails. So before we go into this in too much detail, we really need to figure out where these guys are gonna go. These are the, the hood pins. Um, the pull cable goes in here. So this is basically already set up exactly how we want it, but Good, lucky for us, the locations of where these things are supposed to go is already kind of set here. It's really close to the condenser, more on the driver's side than on the passenger side, but it seems like it's gonna work. So the location of the hood pins is, is already defined. We don't really have to redefine that, which is gonna be good, because it's gonna save us a lot of trial and error. This thing kind of moves, so we'll end up placing this in a good location. But yeah, that's a really big plus for us that we have these, so now we can kind of design our bracket around that. So I built this bracket here. This bracket is basically uh, 065 wall thickness, one by one mild steel. I cut it up as you saw. And the idea is that it sits on top of these, on top of the hood pins, and it'll basically end up connecting the hood pins to the radiator bracket, and then again to here. So this will end up being some sort of metal bracketry that I gotta create. But for now, what I need to do is I need to <clears throat> identify where these holes are gonna be on the bracket, and drill, and I have to actually uh, extend this to a greater than 90 degree bend. But I think I'm only going to do it just in the, uh, in the localized area um, and bend it out and then put a, uh, drill a hole in there uh, for it to screw through. Once I get that in place, then this thing will basically be set where it needs to be. So maybe I'll end up making some bracketry that goes down here or maybe I'll just end up getting something that goes onto here. Um, I'm not sure yet, uh, but I'm kind of winging it as I go. Um, but so far, everything seems to be so good and I'm not getting to a point where uh, I can't I'll have to reinvent it or go back or something. So, so far, so good. To bend it, what I need to do is, I got my two clamps here, and I'm going to end up clamping it on either side of the places that I need to end up doing the bend. Um, I'll clamp it to the table, and then I'll just use um, vice grips or channel grips to slowly bend it out at that greater than 90 degree angle. I believe that the angle is um, uh, like 110 degrees, but I'm gonna measure it real quick too. So there's the lip etched out a little bit. This guy sitting pretty here. All right, so that is like the hood is locked in place. And what I think I want to do is I think I want to add additional bracing right in this location um, because this is not correct. You can't have this guy connected to this guy through the hood pin. 
that is not the right way to do it. So I'm gonna end up welding something that goes around that and it's gonna also connect to these. So that's, gonna, that's where it's gonna end up tying up. And like I said, I need to think about how I wanna connect it to the girder. I think what I might wanna do is just reuse this piece. You know, I mean, it's got the holes already in it. And it connects, it can connect at the top. So maybe there is something there. And then I could just, uh, and then I can add some additional strengthening beams. But yeah, obviously it's gonna have to get cut um, in order to fit, but it's uh, not a bad idea, you know? Um, but we'll see. I just don't feel like it's strong enough. It needs to be stronger. So we'll see what I need to do to, to beef it all up and add, and add the additional strength. This is where I'm at so far. This is the bracket and this triangular piece um, kind of meets that triangular piece there and that's where the welds will end up being and the welds will also be right here on this bracket. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, uh, to tack it on so far and then uh, grind it away later and kind of shape it all uh, exactly how I need it. So. kind of what it looks like for, for now. Basically just connects the hood pin to the rest of the, the radiator brace. And actually this is looking pretty 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 sturdy just for having a couple of tacks on it. Um, that's because I'm using some pretty thick uh, metal here. And I want to figure out how I want to brace this up because what's going to happen is when the air flows in to the grill, there's so much pressure in this assembly that the, the air, if not blocked here, will end up coming straight up. Um, and out so that's not good. I know that the hoods there and everything, but that's not good So we need to put up some sort of a blocking feature and I think that there could be a nice design feature We can make here. I'm just not sure what I'll have to talk with my guy about that to see what he wants to do But we got this guy done now. We got to do the other side I'm not gonna go into the detail that I did on the first one for this guy But there is an extra feature we need to be aware of and that is the uh, the locking The locking latch on the hood when you basically open up the hood this guy pops up just enough to allow your fingers to get under here, which is basically in between the hood and the grill, and you open that up to prevent the hood from flying off if, you, if it ended up coming dislodged on the highway. So that's what this is for, and that's what we need to uh, integrate into this, which would basically make another one of these right here, but we'll add a little feature to prevent this thing, this thing from popping up out of the way. All right? All right, this side's done now. Now, let's remove all this crap, and let's focus on welding this up. Let's focus on getting removable pieces so that this radiator subassembly can then be easily removed without having to remove the entire subframe. And then after that, then we'll get these gussets in down here to the frame rails. All right, quick checkpoint here. Let me explain what I'm doing. I reuse the existing frame rails and actually it, it is pretty strong. That's gonna be my focus here is to brace this guy up connect this better, and then I'm gonna add some gusseting over here in between to prevent this from spinning like that. I'm gonna add gusseting in here on the back side so it's imperceptible. And I'm probably gonna add some more gusseting inside of here so also that is imperceptible. All right, status on where we are here. So we got our radiator subassembly basically completely installed. We do, we do need to beef it up a little bit more, but that's actually moving because of the weakness in the frame rails, which does need to get uh, Gus, that's next on the list. But 
But this is basically what it looks like at this point. Everything's all basically tacked. Nothing is fully welded except a couple of the brackets that you see. Um, I did put additional gusseting underneath here and within here. That's what these marks are for, is for the welds. All this will end up getting uh, sanded down, grinded down, painted. Um, it'll get uh, uh, finely tuned. It doesn't move any more than a regular subframe. It doesn't twist. It, it, it's good, I mean, it's in there. And, uh, and the hood, you can feel confident that the hood is gonna close on this and it's gonna be strong. So I'm guessing that only the loyalist of loyal fans are still watching at this point. But I did wanna say that the radiator core support is done. Um, it does need, all the, all the gusseting is in, but it does need to be all welded up. Um, and that's the next stage. But these removable radiator support brackets, I have a pin in one side as you saw. on the other and it basically pulls the radiator in and it still it moves freely it moves pretty freely without any uh, any obstructions which is exactly what I was looking for the bottom end of these brackets are still uh, need to be uh, beefed up and aligned but overall this is this is basically set where it is um, frame rails do need to be done next so after I uh, fab up and completely weld the uh, subframe core support uh, then it's onto the frame rails And yes, if you're watching, this is my third or fourth change of clothes. Why? Because it takes me a couple days to get to this point. I am now at the point where I'm putting the metal bracketry onto the actual frame rail. So I've traced them out as you saw, I cut them out, and now it's a matter of installing these puppies one by one, modifying, sanding, tracing, tacking down, and then just building it up as I go. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to do the passenger side and just the passenger side, and then I'll do the driver side on my own time. But for the, for the video, you'll see exactly how I do it and uh, the final product when it's done.
that does it for part three of the radiator bracketry install. You saw the time lapses. You saw the amount of work that was put into this. I'll tell you this, if I had to do it all over again, it probably would have been worth the three to 500 extra bucks to get a custom radiator and an electric fan. But we do now have the convenience of zooming through the rest of this installation in regards to plumbing, air, power steering, and front bumper alignment. So we are all good there. Um, I got one more thing here, and that is the bumper bracket. Let's throw this puppy on, huh? I'm not gonna lie, I think that this frame rail is actually stronger than it was stock. I use 16 gauge sheet metal, which is pretty damn thick. It's exactly the same um, thickness as uh, existing on the frame rails. I was gonna use 20 gauge and just kind of double it up, but that was kind of bush league and I didn't wanna do that, but hey, we're done here for this edition of Garageaholic E36 M... <laughs> All right, guys, so that just about does it for this edition of the E36 N54 Swap. My name is Frank Macaluso from Garageaholic, and I thank you for joining. Please like, subscribe, tag your friends if you like the content of the video, and continue to comment. I welcome all comments. Guys, take it easy, and we'll see you soon. Later.